while you guys are doing that, I can move on to the invocation. Um, can I have one of my first year senators um, read out the invocation? Yeah, I can do it. Yes. <laughs> Um, may we, the Student Senate, have the wisdom, patience, and guidance to be responsible representatives. May we be fair in judgments, enlightened in our discussions, and ethical in our actions. Perfect. Thank you, Jenna. Um, and can I have anyone read out the land acknowledgement statement? I could do that. Perfect. We pause to acknowledge that Santa Clara University sits on the land of the Ohlone and Muwekma Ohlone people, who trace their ancestry through the missions Dolores, Santa Clara, and San Jose. We remember their connection to this region and give thanks for the opportunity to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homes. Let us take a moment of silence to pay respect to their elders and to all Ohlone people of the past and present. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the approval of previous minutes. Um, let me share my screen I'm or so let me share the minutes real quick. Um, let's see. Oh my goodness. Wait. Sorry, I just restarted my computer, so everything is super slow. Bear with me, almost there. I'm so sorry about this. Um, okay, there we go. Here are the minutes. I move to approve last week's minutes. Second. Motion from Annika, second from, I didn't catch, quite catch who, who was that? Second. Cassidy, perfect. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Perfect. Um, let's move on to the agenda. Approve the agenda. So there's three main things today. Um, Professor Catherine Saxton, will, um, she's on the COVID-19 like operations task force. Um, I think I think that's what it's called. Um, and she'll share a little bit more about like kind of what the plan, um, what the university has done, but also like in the future quarters, like winter and spring quarter, to kind of combat COVID-19 on campus. Um, and then we'll have um, Ciara. I think Ciara. Um, we'll talk about the student trustee resolution. Um, and then from last week, if you remember, we have the vote of no confidence resolution and we'll vote on that. Um, and yeah, um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion from Cassidy. Second from, I didn't quite catch that again. That was Carmen. Carmen, thank you, Carmen. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Perfect. Um, Professor Saxon, the floor is yours. All right, hi everybody, thanks for having me. Um, is it okay if I share my screen? I have- Yes, go for it. Slides, um, just so that you guys can sort of see what I'm talking about. Um, so, Justin, you got it right. I'm on the COVID operations committee, although there are about a thousand committees that all overlap. Um, so, before I really get started, I also wanted to um, just invite any of you guys to reach out to me anytime you want any COVID-related questions or otherwise, um, there's my email, I'm around. Um, so, I would be remiss as a public health professor if I didn't point out what a terrible situation COVID is right now. Um, it's getting worse. There have been a lot of other things on everyone's mind, understandably, uh, recently. And uh, COVID-19 is trending up. 
So we're sort of at the worst place we've been in in terms of the virus uh, since this all started in terms of cases, hospitalizations, and um, deaths are likely to increase soon. So as we sort of think about heading off for Thanksgiving and gathering for the holidays, um, just keep this in mind. Um, it's not great. But there are things we can do about it. Also, California has been doing relatively well. Um, so if any of you guys are going home to other parts of the country for the holidays, just um, a heads up. So that in mind, um, here's what Santa Clara has been doing. Um, in terms of testing, I, I can't speak to spring quarter. So much is going to depend on how winter goes and what the situation is. Um, but it'll probably look kind of like winter. Um, so for fall, first thing is that there is going to be a huge testing event. Anyone who wants to get tested, faculty, students, staff, um, November 16th and 17th, so that's Monday and Tuesday, come to Levy Center between 9 and 5. You do have to make an appointment first so that people have enough supplies and enough staff there to, to make it work. Um, there's a link. And then um, just a, a reminder that if you do get tested before you head out, um, that that test is only accurate for the day you're actually tested on. So if you or your friends were to go out and um, have one last social event before you leave, uh, your test is no longer meaningful if you were to get exposed afterwards. Um, winter quarter, there will be free testing all around, continued. Um, we're 99.9% .9 sure it's going to shift to saliva testing, which will make it easier for everyone. Um, no swabs up your nose. Um, and we're trying to, in trying to make it as easy as possible and as accessible as possible, there'll probably be three different locations on campus sort of spread out um, around campus. And um, we're thinking through different tiers for the frequency of testing based on how often people are um, present and how many people, other people they're exposed to. Uh, students are all in one tier. So this is very much tentative and just provisional, but you guys can um, take a look. So uh, students will, if you're coming to campus for any reason, so face-to-face -face classes or just stopping in to get a cup of coffee or go to library, um, if you're living nearby, you're expected to get tested every week. Uh, for students who are living on campus or in classes that are meeting on campus, that'll be mandatory weekly testing. Everyone else, it's strongly encouraged, but we don't really have a way to enforce mandatory testing for people who are just living nearby and um, taking all their classes online. So uh, the, the theme for the rest of my presentation is going to be like, please let me partner with all of you guys to help make all of this work um, and get buy-in from, from students to really uh, make this happen. Uh, so then the next tier will be every other week. That'll be for folks who are coming to campus um, less than once a week. And then some people um, may only need to get tested monthly or not at all if they're never coming to campus. Um, so there you go. The next step after testing is contact tracing. So um, for now, um, we have this uh, 5100 number um, for students or anyone to report a positive test. If you're tested on campus, and this will really ramp up in the winter, so there'll be less of a need to call in and report a positive test, we will call you because um, we'll have to that system. The contact tracers are staff from other areas on campus, so um, there'll be a couple of operations staff, Cowell staff, uh, Res Life staff. Um, they're intended to be nice, friendly, welcoming people. Um, I'll just mention right now um, one thing that I find slightly problematic. Um, this 5100 number right now is answered by Campus Safety because that is the office that is open 24 hours a day. Um, we're trying to move away from that. I keep raising this issue. Um, and so in the winter, um, we'll sort of bypass campus safety and it'll just be the contact tracers will be reaching out to students who test positive. Um, that number will still exist, but it'll get routed straight to contact tracing folks. Um, so what happens if you get contacted by a contact tracer? Um, they'll ask you for who your close contacts have been, so housemates, friends that you've been in contact, in close contact with for more than 15 minutes in a day. Um, we'll then notify all those people that they've been exposed. We're also going to try to 
uh, sort of gives up to folks who are not technically a close contact, but may have been in the same room or um, in the same vicinity as people um, who test positive. So if you're in a class, but it's a big class and you weren't near the person, and it wasn't really for that long, uh, but you might want to know that you could have been exposed, um, we'll, we'll make that phone call too. Um, and once you're in the contact tracing system, it sort of talks you through quarantine and support service, um, whether it's getting accommodations from professors, um, if you have a job on campus, working with HR to make sure you get leave, um, things like that is all going to be sort of run through that contact tracing connection. Um, it's all confidential. No one's getting in trouble. If you say I was at a party and all my friends had COVID and now I think I'm sick, no one is going to, like, there are no consequences, right? This is completely separate from any sort of um, enforcement policy. It's really just to um, try to keep people safe and get people support when they need it. Um, and yeah, so, so far we've been able to sort of say, look, this seems to be moving pretty efficiently among households. Um, but not so much among uh, classes, for example. In other words, if your housemate gets infected, um, you are at pretty high risk. Um, we're also making some changes to facilities, right? So uh, tents for outdoor dining, circles on the grass to keep people apart, um, signs and markers and one-way traffic flow in buildings, uh, dividers to keep sort of the people slightly away, oh, to avoid sneezing on each other. Um, and improved air filtration systems. All the, the exciting stuff happening to the buildings, but that's good. And here's where we could use some help. Um, so this is my plea to you guys. Um, if possible, before people go away for the holidays, um, it would be great to know if people are getting tested off campus. Um, just give us a heads up, um, sort of where, where things stand. Uh, so call and report positive tests for now. Um, Again, that'll be less of an issue in the winter when we're, we're doing more, more testing on campus. And um, one of my new jobs is uh, to try to facilitate connections with students living off campus. Um, I've been really frustrated, to be perfectly honest, with a lot of the COVID planning that um, students haven't been nearly as involved as um, I think y'all should be. So there's one like, okay, then you make it happen. Um, so I'd love to hear ideas at any point uh, moving forward about sort of how to promote and encourage safer behaviors, um, what questions students have, how we can help, um, and sort of how to get students involved across the board um, in any way that you guys would like to be. So that's what I got. Happy to answer questions, and I can't help but give y'all some links to all the COVID info that's out there. Questions? First off, thank you, Professor Saxon, for sharing all that. Um, I think the biggest question I have in mind right now is that, like, like I know that, like, we're we're just taught, like, you talked a lot about like winter quarter, but like, from what you know, like, um, like, do you know anything about like what procedures will be in place? spring quarter like if we were have to if we were to potentially be in person like would would there be some mandate such as like a vaccine if that was in place or would it still be like mandatory testing like every single week i don't think well i think you're optimistic to think that there'll be a vaccine available to everyone before spring quarter um i would guess before fall quarter it's more likely um although there's good vaccine news so I would guess that it'll look, it, there may be more in-person classes, but it'll look sort of similar um, with masks and masks are gonna be around for a long time um, and sort of the social distancing and, and so on. Um, but if winter quarter goes well and it works to have students in the dorms and students off campus and coming to campus and sort of in the same spaces, um, then I think everyone would like to have more in-person classes, even if they're still a little weird. And yeah, the, to, to make that happen, it would be a lot of testing because that's the way to sort of prevent things from spreading too quickly. What else? 
I have a quick question. Um, so I'm glad to hear there's going to be ex expanded testing in the winter. I'm wondering, is it still going to be um, mostly the volunteer student EMTs who are responsible for that? Or is, is it going to be contracted to another organization? I just feel like that might be a lot for a volunteer based group. Yeah. So uh, that is a conversation that is happening right now. Um, we are pushing for, because uh, with three locations on campus, it'll probably be three days a week at each of those locations. Student volunteers, that's would be insane. Um, Y'all have to go to school. Um, so it would be staffed by Santa Clara staff. We're not going to outsource it to another company because with the saliva testing, it really doesn't take that much expertise. Um, you self-collection and then it's just a matter of making sure that the sample and the person are, are matched up. Um, so there would be staff at every location and then hopefully uh, paid student workers, um, which could be MTs, could be any of you guys. Uh, who knows? We're trying to get approval for that right now. So stay tuned. Thank you for coming, Dr. Saxton. Um, Jeannie has talked a lot about this map that you have of like all of the different kind of like looking at the campus. Is that like not for us to see or is that accessible to you to kind of like share share how this contact tracing looks? Um, so first of all, I haven't updated it in a little while. Um, <laughs> And it does have specific addresses of where people live. So if you guys know them, um, I feel like that's a confidentiality issue. Um, okay. It, I mean, to, it's like sort of cool to look at, but it essentially just shows that there are sort of cases, like single, maybe two cases at sort of houses or apartments all around campus. And then there are a couple of clusters within um, specific houses that are a little bit larger. Um, but there's no like distinct pattern of like this block is yeah. blowing up with COVID. Sure. And also another question, I guess a lot of students have been requesting that like those who are living off campus that there's some opportunity for like an isolation dorm if they were if they tested positive um, so that their roommates or housemates wouldn't be at risk. It doesn't seem like that's feasible, but I'm curious, like, from your perspective and rather than an administrator, like, what that, why and, and all of that. Yeah, so um, I'm saying this as <laughs> definitely someone who's on the side of the students. Um, I hear you. I agree. Um, I fought as hard as I could for isolation spaces on campus for off-campus students. I brought it up in like, every single meeting. Um, and I think there's just not space or they're given that they don't want to have all the buildings open. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an administrative decision that I don't love. Um, I think if, I don't know if it's going to change to be perfectly honest and that's disappointing. Uh, this is more of a kind of um, on the academic side of things. So with the next quarter, are they looking at doing things like pass, no pass and um, dropping classes the same way that they did this quarter? Or do you think it would be possible for them to revert back to how they did it spring quarter? I think it's going to be the same as it has been this quarter. Um, but again, that's above my pay grade. Um, if it were up to me, quite honestly, I would let everyone, like, those that flexibility would be true every quarter always, and you could take as many classes as you want to pass fail. Maybe that's why they don't put me in charge, but um, I, I think it'll be the same. Rachel? Um, hi, I have a quick question. Um, I'm sure you guys are tracking the situation in Santa Clara County, specifically pretty closely since the school has to work with Santa Clara County in terms of keeping students on campus and the like. Um, what becomes the turning point for us where um, this, the campus is no longer <laughs> going to be open to like the current plan where the 1500 students will be coming onto campus? What becomes that turning point? Is that when Santa Clara County turns red or if it's back up purple or whatever? What is it? I don't know that there's a specific 
tier or number of cases where that's going to change. Um, I think if I would be surprised if the county prevented us from opening with the current plan of having students come to campus. Um, the dorms are actually probably safer than a lot of just general living situations because um, people will be more spread out. I would I think it's more likely that if things get really bad, um, there'll be sort of a shelter in place on campus. So no more classes in person, no more going to the library, that sort of thing. Um, but I don't think there's any thought that people will be sent back home. <laughs> That's a great question in the chat. I don't know how students will be held accountable for not going to off-campus parties, um, for not wearing masks. My hope is that everybody will, um, I'm so optimistic, um, but that students will sort of buy into this culture of thinking if this is going to happen, if we want to be able to keep things going, then everybody needs to be on the same page and, and be making the safe choices. Um, there's not been any discussion about um, enforcement of masks. I'm pretty strongly um, against any enforcement mechanisms I have heard. Like, I don't know what the best option is. If you guys have ideas, please let me know. Um, I just can envision only bad outcomes of people trying to enforce masks on campus, or the expected people trying to enforce masks on campus. Um, on this topic, um, I've heard a lot of things from various students off campus in regards to like the, uh, I forget the, the name, I'm thinking placebo, but that's not the right, or the antibodies, thank you. Um, uh, so people think that lighting entities will then help them be able to party and if everyone gets it and then everyone has antibodies and they can continue to do that so can you kind of debunk that or kind of explain so we could easily explain to students as well how that's not really the best argument to be having yeah this disease is way too dangerous to try that great it's not like chicken pox where when i was a kid before there was a chicken pox vaccine everybody would like try to get their kids to get sick so that you would get it over with um herd immunity will kill people in order to get to herd immunity people will get really really sick and that's true for like young people it's true for college aged people um that when you have enough people getting infected to as you say like then everyone gets it everybody's fine and um, that has sort of knock-on effects that were um not everyone will be okay um, I think that's the blunt answer. <laughs> Is it? Um, my question was like, there's talk of being a nationwide shutdown when Joe Biden is inaugurated. What would that look like if we're on campus? Um, first of all, I'll just say that no shutdown anywhere in the US has actually has been nearly as severe as in places in some places right so when oftentimes when people talk about a national lockdown or a national shutdown um it's relatively minor probably like what we experienced in um march I lost complete track of time um so it would probably look like um everyone shelters in place stays where you are only go out for essential activities uh, grocery store doctor's appointments, uh, classes would all be online, that sort of thing. Um, and with that, we are out of time. Um, thank you so much, Professor Saxton. Um, do you want to drop your contact information um, down in like, the Zoom chat if anyone has any further questions so they can send them that. to you? Um, For sure. Yes. Uh, and yeah, if you guys have any ideas about uh, things we could be doing or ways students would like to be involved or like messages to students, anything, send them my way. Right. Yeah, um, and with that, we will move on to the next item on our agenda, um, the student trustee resolution. Um, Cassidy, Ciara, Ann, the floor is yours. Do you need me to share um, the resolution or can you guys do that? I can share it. Perfect. 
Excuse my 20 trillion tabs open because of a poli sci assignment due tomorrow. Um, so can you all see this? Cool. Okay, so I'll do my little pitch thing. Um, let me get everything. And then if Cassidy and Anne want to add on, just hop in. Um, basically, so since last where I brought this up, um, and Cassidy and I worked on this resolution, um, I met with John Audubon last week, um, and to give like a, basically a summary, um, he basically said that John Audubon is graduated from Santa Clara in 1969. He's the COO. He, um, like was a student he was the first young alumni trustee in 1970 and like has been on the board off and on for probably like 40 years he was also asg president in 1969 which is just a fun fact that he wanted to share um but so basically he said that there has not been an effort to put forth like a a trust a student trustee on the board and so we had a good conversation kind of about like where to go from here and what the process would look like. And I'm really hoping that through this resolution and just greater push from students, if necessary, that this can happen for the next, um, for the next school year in September. Um, so I don't know if yeah, if any of you have questions, but basically after other conversations with other Jesuit schools, not all of them have a student trustee on their board, but a lot of them do have students on their subcommittees at least, and the board is comprised of like several subcommittees, and I serve on the student affairs and athletics um, committee, but I'm literally like the only student at any aspect of this level, which I think is absolutely absurd. And I think that maybe I'm hoping that it's just because no one's really pushed for this to this extent that it's just never gone through or like never really occurred as an issue. So I'm hoping if like we make it an issue and we like work with admin that this could actually be some progress to get voices at the student level. And Cassidy, I don't know if you have any thoughts. Yeah. Or just to reinforce how important this is, um, even if, because it's not possible to get student voting members, but just to have students sitting on the board and being able to provide feedback on policies or any decisions that are being passed um, by the board of trustees are really, really, really important um, because they might not have exposure to a student perspective. Um, and I'm sure everybody understands why that's problematic when there's a bunch of people making decisions about the students without a student voice. Um, and this is something that I, there's no reason why they shouldn't be okay um, with including a student voice, but we really need to push for it. So um, yeah, game on. Yeah, just to like really emphasize the importance and like how there has been transparency issues and like having those communication channels of communication like as many as we can with administration and now with the board of trustees i think that um yeah it's just a good thing that's like as both sierra and ann have said like not really that much that we're asking for and a pretty normal thing for other universities and just to add um in terms of the non-voting versus voting member I don't know any Jesuit school that has a voting student member. Um, so the closest thing is like the young alumni member. Um, but from what I've heard, it's like claimed as a conflict of interest. I considered Robbie gave feedback of like just putting voting member and then whatever, like negotiate <laughs> and at least get a non-voting member. So if you all think that is like a better way to go, um, then I could change it. But it just doesn't seem like a voting member will be possible considering that like our school didn't even consider to have the ASG president or a student actually sitting on the board of trustees. So I wouldn't expect them to all of a sudden get us on and a, and a voting opportunity as well. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, anyone has questions, please raise your hand. Um, I just want to give you guys context. Um, I'm going to leave this up to you guys if you guys want to vote on this this week or next week. If you guys want to vote on this next on, on it this week, we would have to suspend the standing rules and then proceed to a vote. Um, but if you guys think that you guys have to take another week to consider this resolution to talk to constituents, then we can just skip straight to the next resolution. Um, but Hawa, do you have a question? Yeah, thank you, Justin and Ciara. Um, my question was kind of, I guess, about like current uh, Board of Trustees pr procedure that Ciara, you, you may know, but if you don't, that's fine. Um, one thing I really appreciate about what you and Ann do on your um, exec Prez VP Instagram is report back on the many meetings you have. And so I think about if this resolution was to realize what it's trying to do and the next school year we can have representation from the students. Um, is there some kind of confidentiality around what goes on in Board of Trustees meetings to everybody else that a potential student board member uh, would have to abide by? Or am I just misremembering that um, for some reason, I feel like these Board of Trustees meetings sometimes are, if not completely, but at least somewhat private. So if you could elaborate. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So I'm not really sure how much I can report back, like not from an SU perspective, but from other schools, it seems like there was a clear line of like what's confidential and what what's not. Um, and so like students students on the board at other you know, Jesuit universities were able to navigate navigate that um, like well. But in from what, just to give context, I, so the faculty and student president um, are able to go to the quarterly BOT meeting um, for like literally 15 minutes and like we all give like three minute updates and then they ask us questions and then we leave. So um, I'd assume like we'd be, as a student trustee, whoever it is will be able to sit in on the whole meeting. But even if there is like something extremely confidential, which I don't know what that would entail, like I'm sure even then there'd be an opportunity for a closed session. But ultimately I think any position of decision-making for students, a student should be able to be in the room. Um, so yeah, Hawad, I don't have a direct answer to that question, but I think there's ways to figure that out. And I'm sure that admin will and BOT will draw lines of what we can do, what we can't do. Definitely. And thank you for answering. It's definitely beyond um, what the resolution is writing for. And I'm really excited about um, the resolution and the work thus far. And I'm excited to support it. Thanks. And also, um, just broadly, uh, it would be great to get this out to get this voted on tonight if there aren't any clear objections or or need to to postpone only because i'm meeting with john audubonny again on tuesday um and it would be great tomorrow to get this sent out so then i don't like there's more of a sense of urgency i guess any other questions or feedback or non-voting versus voting member opinions on that. If there aren't any more questions or comments, um, I would, um, I think again, if we wanna vote on it this week, then someone would have to suspend the standing rules. If not, we can just table it for the next week. But um, yeah, I don't know, someone needs to do a motion. A motion to suspend the standing rules of the Senate. Motion by Hawad. Second. Seconded. Second by Angel. All those in the favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Perfect. Um, so now, um, what's next? Um, could I please get a motion to vote? Motion to vote. Motion from Vanessa. Second. Second from Christina, I think. Or Second. Sam. Sam, Sam, Sam. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Perfect. If you would like to, the resolution has been passed. 
Um, let's move on to the next item, which is old business, um, which is the vote of confidence resolution that we talked about last week. Um, so, um, I, I, Sierra, do you want to do you want to share the update that you got, or should I do it? Justin, you can do it, and I'll add. To yeah. It. Okay, right. so um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit or remind you what the vote of no confidence resolution was. This is basically um, a resolution written by the Santa Clara University Racial Justice Coalition and it was sent to all three senates um, in the university. So student senate, staff senate, and faculty senate. Um, I just received word from Ciara or Joanna Thompson actually that the staff senate voted no or they chose not to adopt the no confidence resolution. Um, and Ted, if I'm not, mistaken the faculty senate also didn't adopt the resolution had you muted okay i think he's rejoining but as, um from, from what i gather from the email like the the general sentiment seemed to be like they supported the sentiment of the resolution but they were um the staff um, we're kind of curious, like, were there some more, like, productive means of getting the, the, the proposed impact that we want, which is students feeling safe on campus without necessarily having to, um, with, without, like, further bringing the animosity that, like, everyone has with campus safety on campus. Or that, that that's what I gathered from um, Joanna Thompson's email, at least. Sierra, if you could, is there anything else you would like to say? Yeah, so um, I didn't know about the faculty senate thing. I was kind of, <laughs> Justin, did, who told you that? Ted. Ted messaged me that earlier um, today. Oh, cool. Well, not cool, but anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wanted to share um, these questions as well, um, but I, okay. These are some, I guess, follow-up questions from Joanna regarding I'll just read what she said. She just said um, they they decided to not adopt the vote of new co no confidence resolution. The questions below are what I asked staff to think about how we move forward as a community to heal and enact systemic change. Feel free to share these with your constituents as well. Um, another thing that I just assumed was a factor when I looked at this at, at the response was just the fact that like John Loretto and campus safety in general are also staff members. So there's also this awkward tension of how do we, like, how do you navigate that as staff Senate um, when you should be supporting your staff and being uh, a representative for them, but also in something like this situation, it, it gets really complicated. Um, that being said, I guess you all should also think about these questions um, and, if you have any other questions, I can try to answer or Justin can. Um, but yeah, just wanted to share those few things. Yeah, um, and I think Ted is going to copy and paste. Oh, Judge Cordell's audit report of campus safety should be finished in less than a month. Oh my goodness, that's really soon. Um, student life is exploring ways to shift functions of campus safety to other units on campus, though no timetable was given. Staff Senate would not support bringing a no confidence vote to their members. Instead, we're redrafting a motion that expressed concern, but stopped short of a no confidence vote. Um, members of the staff Senate felt that faculty were targeting the staff members of campus safety unfairly with the proposed no confidence vote. So Ted, could you could you actually clarify? I, I said earlier that faculty senate didn't pass this resolution. Is that is that true or am I mistaken? I don't think his mic's working. Interesting. Um, so staff senate has not passed this resolution. Faculty senate is taking more time. Um, I also don't think they meet as often as we do. Um, but now, um, I don't know, um, I guess we can start the discussion now. Um, like knowing all of that, oh, just kidding. Ted just said, we discussed the possibility of delaying a vote um, in the faculty senate to allow one coordination with the staff senate to adopt more unified language. 
to wait for the findings from Judge Cordell and for members of the Racial Justice Coalition to have a seat at the table to discuss the findings. Um, but yeah, um, with that, Abby, I think you have your hand raised. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, I, I it's, it's kind of tough because I do think it would be a lot more impactful if all three bodies were submitting something together. That's why like I really originally really liked this idea. But that being said, I also don't like the idea of waiting. I think that during the diversity forum, one thing that students left really frustrated about was the fact that administrators um, refused to take any immediate accountability because they just kept using the audit as an excuse to wait on anything, even things that didn't necessarily need to be waited on. Um, and so, I don't know, I think as students, we have a different position. We don't have any sort of obligation, obligation to staff members in the same way that the staff senate does. Although I don't think that being a staff member means that they have to stick up for other staff members who have done something that was perceived as pretty racist. But that being said, we don't have that same obligation anyway. And our obligation is to represent students. And I think students are in the moment pretty upset about um, recent conduct. So I, I think it would be pretty, I, I don't think we should delay it, even though it would be nice if all three bodies agreed. So I do want to remind them that even though um, with what Ted shared, um, like the stuff from faculty and staff senate at the end of the day, like we represent the students um, and we should take their concerns into consideration. But again, we do represent the students at the end of the at the end of the day. Um, so Ted just said the faculty senate moved to table the vote on the resolution to a future meeting. The motion carried ununanimously. A member of the faculty senate also requested that a representative of campus safety be invited to speak before the resolution in its current or amended form before the resolution in its current or amended form be brought back to the faculty, faculty senate for a vote. So they're trying to get campus safety to have a say in this? It seems like it. I'm curious though, as to what they are expecting campus safety to say, because it's not, I don't think they can say anything that they haven't already said before. Um, I'm not requesting for a representative from campus safety to be invited to speak beforehand. I also think campus safety has had multiple opportunities to speak on the issue, especially immediately after the diversity forum, especially because there were all those like notifications that came about the coyote. Like it's not like they couldn't send some kind of message out being like apologizing for exactly what happened. But I also think in addition, the idea that we should create a document that has more unifying language is a little bit problematic in and of itself. Like in our commitment to be an anti-racist society, it doesn't but you need a whole hand and like by you with candidacy in the process of it, you know, like I just don't think it's exactly tied to the mission of anti racism if we're going to try for a more uniform. Yeah, I'm gonna guide the conversation a little bit in terms of like the different options we have. Um, we can do two different things. We can vote on this tonight, um, and that would just go into a simple vote, yes, no, or we can do what the Faculty Senate has done, um, which is postpone it again, pending more information. Um, but um, in order for me to personally feel comfortable to do that, we would like, like, does anyone have proposals for what we would like to see? But if that's not the case, I very much vote on this resolution tonight. Um, I would agree, Justin, in that I would like to vote tonight as well, uh, given I, I was absent last week, but I was uh, very interested to read the uh, resolution since then and actually perhaps only, I guess, catch up on it through the meeting minutes. Um, and the reason I wouldn't like vote because we think a resolution like this could very easily uh, be voted to be reversed if the results of the audit uh, were to be convincing for the members of our student senate here. Um, I think we are all, you know, young professionals and students and could take a look at what the audit produces for ourselves and decide whether we think uh, the recommended conclusions and actions were sufficient in comparison to what we've been seeing in our campus community. Um, so uh, I will not motion to vote because I think others may have something to say, but that's where I stand.
Um, I guess I'm thinking about uh, Joanna's questions, and the one that I'm looking at is what would an alternative to the no confidence resolution be, and how would we be transparent about that? And I think that I'm trying to find like what and all like I what sort of alternatives that would look like, and I think that I'm finding at least for myself that we as a community have tried as much as we can. We've had the diversity forum. Um, there's been multiple times where we've come to administrators asking for these changes to be made, where we've come to campus safety saying these are the problems and that they haven't been, it feels like we haven't been listened to, at least from what I've seen. And so I'm not, I'm not envisioning any sort of alternatives that would not like pack as hard a punch, but would be as, um, and I, I guess I'm, I don't know exactly what I'm saying, but I am, I'm trying to think of an alternative and I'm not thinking of one, I guess is my point. Um, I just wanted to add something really quickly that um, in further delaying this, I don't, I'm not sure that, um, I mean, we do, we, we represent the students. And so if the biggest first, one of the biggest frustrations that students came out of the forum with was the inaction and the fact that responses from administration parallel on inaction. And I think we stand, um, in a unique situation as student representatives to um, to break that in action. I second that. I also want to make note that this um, this resolution was written in like not in partnership, but like they definitely took Isaac's influence and like consideration and opinion into account. So that I also really commend and I think is really necessary for residents. To expand upon my second, I think that um, it's really important for us, <laughs> stop laughing, it's really important for us to be voices for people who don't have voices right now. Like Angel just said, ISAC is working on this because people who don't have positions like we do aren't able to be heard and they're tired. And so we are a reflection of them and us not doing anything is us being like admin and we don't want to be like admin right now because they don't feel like they're on our side. Um, I'm just going to do a quick straw poll. Um, if just please raise your hand if you feel like you're ready to on this resolution like right now as we stand. Um, don't raise your hand if you feel like we need a little bit more time to discuss. Um, and for the people who don't have their hand raised, um, I will now, do, is there anything you want to bring up, talk about, um, or any concerns specifically? Okay, it seems like most of us are ready to vote tonight or right now. Um, and because of that, um, I would entertain a motion to vote. Motion to vote. Oh my goodness, three people, three different people said that, I think. Who said that? Motion to vote, I did. Motion from Marielle, second from Second. Abby. All in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Perfect. Um, if you would vote um, to endorse this vote of no confidence resolution, please raise your hand. Um, and I will now lower all hands. Um, and if you if you would like to vote against endorsing the no confidence resolution, um, please raise your hand. Um, 
And, uh, okay, so I think Sierra just messaged me, make sure no one abstains. I didn't happen to check if anyone, or if anyone didn't vote. Um, but from what I saw, it seems like everyone voted yes. Um, Student Senate has endorsed this resolution. Thank you all. Um, and yeah, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which should be, um, which is exec updates. Sorry, I am, let me share my screen. There we go. Wow, my computer, did, okay, there we go, perfect, Yash? All right, hi guys. Um, sorry, my, my camera's being a little janky right now, so kind of off right now. But um, yeah, so love your neighbors uh, with Will Gagan. Bags are ready to go. We had about 32 requests. Um, so we're just loading up the face masks and sanitizers this Friday, and we'll get them out. Um, yeah, this will kind of be a test run. You know, hopefully um, winter and spring quarter, we can have even more people um, as things get better. Um, and additionally, you know, ComDev is kind of wrapping up a lot of its projects. Um, and I'll be happy to announce a lot more updates for next week. But if anyone has any interest in any, you know, external facing projects, whether it's something that's associated with admin or something associated with um, a passion of yours, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think, I believe Exec is working on a dashboard. So you guys will be able, easily be able to see, you know, which comm dev people to reach out to. And if you guys have any questions, um, I'll always be present in the Slack. So feel free to hit me up. Thanks, guys. Rita, I yes, hello. Um, yeah, so sweaters are here. Um, Yash will be handing them out. Um, so hit him up if you're in the area um, to pick those up and coordinate with him. Um, and our PR meetings are every week on Wednesdays at um, 6.30. Um, and if you have like a big project that you want to be that you want us to promote um, on social media or like in the newsletters or anything like that. Um, we do ask you that you come to our meetings just so that we can like get to know like what exactly you, um, like what your vision is for the, that way, you know, we're all on the same page. We can like, you know, coordinate it together. And then um, make sure to fill out those Google forms for post and email flyers. Um, yeah, it's all pretty straightforward, nothing. Crazy. Does anyone have any questions for me? <laughs> Thanks, Frida. Thank um, you. Robbie? What's up, everybody? You want to click over to the slide? Thank you. Uh, what's up, y'all? Um, so come to us with some bylaw changes if you have that. Hey, KJ, how's it going? Um, really wanted to put out first and foremost that we are working on task forces. So specifically talking to the folks that have run task forces. Um, we're going to be doing the codification of that um, for the upcoming winter quarter. So we'll have a meeting on that next week, which will be uh, six o'clock on Wednesday. So if you have run a bylaw, not a bylaw, if you have run a task force and want to come over and talk to us about what you want in these laws and what, how you want it to work, uh, please stop by and say hi. Justin will be there. We're going to be hashing that out, um, as well as if you're just interested in all in the, in the issue. Um, and then finally, we're gonna have another Mesher bonding event sometime soon. Judicial's looking to hang out with somebody. So if you want to have a great time and hang out with the best branch on ASG, sorry, I love you guys on sign up, but it's true. Um, hit us up. And finally, come with us to any bylaw changes. Uh, I love to talk about that, so. Cool. Well, uh, I would like to say that, Robbie, I don't think that is true, but uh, we can agree to disagree. Um, just updates. Remember to meet with your ASG buddy uh, by the end of the quarter. That means send out an email, contact them, and have a Zoom meeting with um, Our branch meetings are Wednesdays at 5 p.m. And feel free to stop by and check out our projects. And then also, we'll be hopping around into other meetings this week. So say hello. Um, so yeah, look out for that.
Hello, hello. Um, happy, happy Thursday. Um, just a reminder to please add something meaningful to that accountability document that was sent in the Slack again last week. I can send it out again um, tonight. Um, airtime with admin. We have a um, date and a time and a place. Um, it is going to be on Tuesday at seven o'clock and, or is it six? It's at six actually. So I was just pulling a lot of legs there by saying seven. It's at six o'clock. It'll end at seven. So I guess we're, we're kind of right, right there. Um, it's going to be all about winter quarter. Um, we're going to field questions uh, like before. So we have questions ready in case a lot of people don't show up. Um, but if there are a lot of people there, then we can ask live questions there. Um, it's going to be with Provost Kloppenberg, Jeannie, and Father O'Brien. So the big dogs will be there um, to answer any questions we have about winter quarter and what that looks like in terms of COVID um, and all that stuff. And then the UPCs, so I've, so the, the feedback is trickling in. Um, I did get some feedback from a rep on the Student Affairs Committee and they're working on, she had some questions about how to go about um, Title IX policy things. So I'm gonna connect with Abby and the Student Safety Task Force about that and see if she'd be involved in getting involved with that way. Um, so if there's more projects that come in that I hear about from the UPCs as I check in with them, um, I'll report back to Senate and we'll figure out what to do with that. And I'm gonna send out feedback forms next week um, for every, to know about your branch and then also if you're on a committee within the branch to get your feedback on the whole quarter um, so we can be our, the best versions of ourselves in ASG um, winter quarter. That is it. Hey all, so as you know, um, this, wait, Justin <laughs> ruined. So this is our um, new president and the first lady. Um, but I felt that, you know, this picture of Father O'Brien, I guess, met, met Joe Biden and Joe Biden. But then I figured it'd be funny if I photoshopped Anne and my faces on it. So Justin, now cue next slide. So yeah, and remember to wear your mask. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the the real Prez and VP right there. Um, so now on a less funny note, um, airtime with admin, like Anne said, six to seven, um, show up if you can, that would be great just to, to have some more faces um, and voices and questions and whatnot. Um, other updates. Um, Yes, Jill Biden. Um, no progress with John Kerrigan. Um, I was hoping to meet with him this week and he kind of just ignored my email. And so I followed up and he asked if we could meet week 10, which is kind of frustrating considering like Chris and I don't can't do anything until we meet with him because he didn't give any feedback on divestment and like what we could actually do. Um, so not sure how to channel that frustration yet like still trying to push this diplomatically but also like we need to put the pressure i guess if they're not willing to like work with us so i'll keep you posted on how that works and any insights or advice you have please let me know um project tracker hopefully you all have heard about that by now in your respective committees I think this is a really good opportunity to just see what everyone else is doing and have more cohesion with an ASG and not just, you know, like Senate or your respective committees. Um, so hopefully with all the branches um, and getting enough feedback to be able to track progress regard, even though it's like been tough virtually. Yes, thanks a lot for plugging that. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, Justin, can you go back? What is wrong? <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully okay. no one saw that. Um, impeach Justin, please. Okay, Greek life leaders. <laughs> um, so Dr. Saxton, who just spoke, we're trying to coordinate a meeting with all of the frat and sorority presidents, which is why I put that in Slack to get names. Thank you all for like giving feedback. That was like the most Slack involvement I've ever seen, and I almost cried. Um, so yeah, that's all good to go. So we're hoping 
that people like these presidents show up and basically it's supposed to be a conversation about what winter quarter would look like if they do not abide by like these protocols especially with a lot of frats potentially recruiting um or trying to lay down the law even though they're unaffiliated so hopefully that works but i'm not really sure how it's gonna go and then yeah i already talked about um when in doubt cc the mcc but just so you know we're doing mcc prep meeting about the ubc and kind of what mcc funding looks like so um carmen and melanie and justin and kevin will be with like the mcc and ted next week to just talk about that more and you already know about the trustee thing um Thanks for voting on it. I'll keep you posted on what happens in the next couple weeks. Thanks, y'all. Now, Justin, you can change the slide. Senator of the week, Angel Lynn. Um, I just wanted to say something popular to con contrary to popular belief. I cannot speak. Contrary to popular belief, we are not dating. KJ, I'm talking to you, Annika, Abby, Robbie. Everyone. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. but, <laughs> um, but, but um, I just wanted to shout, give her a shout out um, for her performance um, on facilitating the ISAC Diversity Forum that last week, especially that last five minutes. Um, I think that was very impressive and um, especially like grilling John Rowe like that. Oh my goodness. Um, and also just like generally your work um, on DTA, um, and yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Roundtable remarks. Uh, I dropped it. Oh, should I raise my hand? Just go for it. Okay, I dropped it in the ASG Fun Slack, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But in my race and inequality class today, some kids thought it'd be really fun to Zoom bomb and dress up like campus security because that's super funny especially with everything that's going on and has been going on on campus so one thing is just look out for that in your classes because i've been made to feel like this was not a one-time thing um people were like oh has this happened in any other classes yet i think there were people on it who pretended like they weren't so just um i don't know keep your eye out for that i'm going to work with my professor to try to figure out who was behind this. I didn't recognize any of the guys who were dressed up. Um, and there's also people wearing like fake afros and stuff. So I just think it was really insensitive. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out and I'll keep you guys posted if I hear anything else. Okay, I raised my hand this time, but apparently that is a matter. So um, although y'all already know this, um, it's very, very important to pay attention to COVID. I know you know, but the levels are going up, and I just wanted to plug real quick. If y'all need PPE, the ACSA has like 30,000 masks. We have so much hand sanitizer. We have gloves. We have little moist towelettes. Please come and get PPE if you need it. Um, if you want to know more about what's going on, come and learn. If you want to volunteer and help hand out food, come and do that. We do it the first and third Friday of every month. If you want to come any day of the week volunteer, we all need um, Just of course, I know you all know, and I know y'all are all with it, but just remember to educate others. Numbers are rising. It's not surprising, and we have to definitely do something about it because it affects um, marginalized communities, and we don't want that. That's it. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to shroud to remark? Sam? Yeah, I have something. Um, so on Sunday, it was National First Gen Day, and I'm really glad that ASG got to be a part of it. I saw a lot more, like, shout-outs happening uh, for Lead this time around just from, like, different orgs on campus, and so that was really nice to see, and I'm glad that we were able to contribute to that. And thank you to everyone who uh, submitted their videos and helped put it together.
Um, this week is Transgender Awareness Week, and at the end on November 20th, it's going to be Transgender Day of Remembrance. Um, and so just to keep that in mind, and the RRC will be posting a lot of stuff this week, so if you guys want to repost that, that would be awesome. Seems like there isn't anything else. Um, I just had so, a quick, quick thing, oh, Justin. Oh, cool Yeah, thanks and sorry, uh, but I think you'll appreciate it. Um, really excited about uh, the, the little project tracker um, spreadsheet from a committee chair perspective because uh, over at CEC, our meetings are very uh, discussion-based and critical, and uh, we, we like to go deep on the issues. And uh, I think the project tracker is going to, allow us to be more synced as a you know branch of our great organization in fact as a whole organization i saw that it's more than just senate um so a little friendly bump um to make sure you're using it so that you know it reaches its full potential and we can be really productive as a team here thanks just um and with that i would entertain a motion to adjourn Motion Guess we don't have to adjourn. <laughs> Motion from Christina. Second. Second from KJ. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Perfect. We're now adjourned. <laughs>